yeah let us continue with our discussion about the different types of transforms in the previous lecture we had seen that uh, basically we have four different types of signals one is continuous time periodic signal we have continuous time a periodic signal then we have discrete time periodic signal we have discrete time a periodic signals so depending upon these four signal types we have the different four transforms so when the signal is continuous time periodic we go for continuous time fourier series when we have discrete time periodic signal we go for discrete time fourier series when we have continuous time or periodic signal we go for continuous time fourier transform and when we have discrete time or periodic signal we go for a transform which is called as a discrete time fourier transform but now there are certain practical problems in computing what we call it as a discrete time fourier transform so discrete time fourier transform is not used practically so there are some problems practically on the practical computation of this discrete time fourier transform okay so practically computing the dtft is not possible with the help of a computer or a, a digital hardware that's why we go for a transform which is called as a discrete time fourier transform so this discrete time fourier transform is obtained from discrete time discrete fourier transform sorry discrete fourier transform is obtained from discrete time fourier transform by sampling this dtft that is through a process which is called as sampling okay which is uh, which is a process called as sampling so we have seen like we can convert a continuous time signal into a discrete time signal by a process called as sampling so by sampling this dtft we get a transform which is called as a dft and there are so many uh, Uh, algorithms which are available for computing this dft in a very efficient manner on a computer these set of algorithms are called as fft that is fast fourier transform algorithms so the fast fourier transform algorithms are very effective algorithms for computing the dft and dft is practically used everywhere okay uh, for example like when we are uh, hearing the signals on a mobile phone or whether the signals may be of any communication transmission okay normally these signals will be transformed into their frequency domain with this transform of dft so there will be dsp processors in the uh, hardware which will be computing the fast fourier transform of these signals in order to get get their frequency representations <coughs> so this uh, this dft is having a practical significance it is of practical significance compared to the other transforms so we are going to see fft in our last unit wherein we are going to study these two algorithms which are used one is called as a dit algorithm and one is called as a dif algorithm so that will be the topic for the last last unit in this signals and systems now let us try to understand why we need to go for the z transform now if you can see here here nowhere there is a z transform here everywhere we were talking about the fourier series and fourier transforms okay so in fact fourier is a very important and fundamental transform so fourier was the first person first person who who said that any periodic signal that occurs in nature can be can is actually made up of sums of sines and cosines he was able to he was able to uh, he was able to uh Uh, give a mathematical formula which uh, says that any periodic signal that occurs in nature may it be triangular square anything that actually is it is made up of sines and cosines so that was a very revolutionary concept which gave to the which gave which uh, gave the formula for fourier series and then he developed the fourier transform which was for a periodic signals but there are certain limitations of fourier fourier theory okay so what are these limitations these limitations are called as dirichlet conditions now what is the meaning of dirichlet condition so dirichlet was a person who found out that they, we cannot find the fourier transform of all the signals all the periodic signals because fourier predicted that all the periodic signals occurring in nature can are fourier transformable but dirichlet found out that there are certain signals even though when they are periodic okay we cannot find they are fourier transforms so which are those signals for of whom we cannot find the fourier transform so there these are the some examples like for example the first condition that is if the signals are having are not having finite number of maxima and minima then we cannot find out the fourier transform 
that is if you see the see the signal here in this signal the signal is oscillating up and down in this time period now if this is the maximum value this is the minimum value so if you try to find out how many number of maximums are there and how many number of minimums are there okay but if you find that this is uh, there are infinite number of maxima and minima in one cycle so when this is the case when the signal is having infinite number of maxima and minima in one cycle we cannot find the fourier transform of such signal second condition is that the signal should have finite number of discontinuities what is meant by discontinuity if you observe this signal in one period see this is a periodic signal okay this is also a periodic signal so we are talking only about the periodic signals so this is periodic signal but see here uh, the when the signal value changes abruptly this is called as a discontinuity so there is a discontinuity here there is a discontinuity here there is a discontinuity here and so on so if in this one cycle if i tell you how count the number of discontinuities which are there in this signal you will not be able to find out because this signal is having so many number of discontinuities which is infinite okay so the thing is that in one cycle if there is if there are infinite number of discontinuities we cannot find out the fourier transform this this example is in one period there is finite number of discontinuity we can see there is only one discontinuity here okay in this we can find out the fourier transform why because in one cycle there is only one maxima and minima one maxima and minima for but in this one cycle there are infinite number of maxima infinite number of minima here you can see there are infinite number of discontinuities in one cycle okay so these are fourier transformable this is not fourier transformable this is not fourier transformable this is fourier transformable okay so there is a condition or what is the last condition the last condition is that the signal should be absolutely integrable in one period okay now if you try to integrate this signal over one period if i try to find out the integration of this signal in one period then i can see that I, the value will approach infinity okay so this is the meaning that is if the signal is not absolutely integrable i cannot find out the fourier transform but if i find out the integration of this one period then it gives me a finite value so such signals are absolutely integrable i can find out the fourier transform but the signals which are not absolutely see this is e raised to something positive okay e raised to x okay so if you integrate this into over a period of time then extending to infinity so as x value will change t value will change this will approach infinity so this is not absolutely integrable this uh, value will lead to infinity so we cannot find the fourier transform of such signals so these three conditions are called as the dirichlet conditions so dirichlet conditions uh, the signals which uh, which do not which do not satisfy the dirichlet conditions are not fourier transformable okay so this is how we can summarize it this is the first condition finite minimum finite number of maxima and minima second condition finite number of discontinuities third signal should be absolutely integrable so this is the formula so the x of t is the signal if you take the integration of this signal from minus infinity to plus infinity its value should be less than infinity that is it should come finite value it cannot be infinite okay so this is the meaning finite value so this is these are these are the ca called as the dirichlet conditions now what is the solution like if we, if these signals are not fourier transformable but we we need to find out the frequency domain representation of such signals so which is the tool which is used to find out the frequency domain representations of such signals which are not fourier transformable so the answer is laplace and z transform so laplace and z transforms are used when so laplace and z transform come into picture when when the fourier transform is not uh, capable of transforming the signals like beyond fourier transform there is z transform and laplace transform and laplace is on for continuous time signals okay laplace is used for continuous time signals and z transform is used for discrete time signals so this is the basic concept like when when fourier theory fails like when fourier with the use of fourier we are not able to find out the frequency domain representations of signals that is we are not able to transform the signals from time domain to frequency domain okay using fourier we can see in that the signals which do not satisfy the dirichlet conditions okay so such signals can be transformed using the transform called as laplace and z so these are very important transforms 
So Laplace and Z are important transforms. Okay.